Fun Math mini lesson brought to you from my RV to wherever you are. Thanks to technology, I can teach you no matter where I am. Today we're going to be talking about number lines. Number lines show us how numbers compare to each other when they are placed in order. So in the order we count, we place them on a number line. This is a number line, arrows on either side, and we add our numbers, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Always remember that your biggest numbers are going to be over here on your right hand side and your smallest numbers are going to be on your left hand side. Very important for number lines. The next thing about number lines is that they can be counting by any multiple. So we don't have to count by ones to make a number line. You can count by fives. This is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And there are numbers on the number line that you can't see. Okay. I could put a hashtag here and write 6, 7, 8, 9. But just knowing that they're there, we don't have to always write them. You can even go bigger than 5 in between. You could have, this has 10. We've got 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. We've got 10 numbers here in between 50 and 60. And you can go bigger than that. This has 100 numbers between 500 and 600. The, as long as you have evenly spaced multiples on your number line, you can use just about any type of multiple to count on a number line. Number lines can start and finish in many different numbers as well. Just always remember that your bigger number has to be over here on the right, smaller number over here on the left. Okay, so we can start with zero. Many number lines do. We can count by ones, simple and easy. We can start with any other number and also count by ones just as long as you're getting bigger. Okay, there is another thing that you can do with a number line and you can have a zero at the end. And you're going, wait, Ms. Rocky, no, 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 zero is the smallest number. But that's not true. And I know this kind of belongs under a mind-blown moment, but, you know, we've got a couple of mind-blown moments in this episode because there are numbers smaller than zero. They're called negative numbers. This is negative one. And I know this is kind of going to be above and beyond right now, and that's all right. Just know that there are numbers smaller than zero. A negative one means that you owe somebody something. Okay, you have less than zero you also owe. So for example, if I had no money but I borrowed a dollar from my sister to go to the store and buy candy, well now I have to pay her back her dollar before I get any money of my own. So that's a negative number. And they can get, you know, negative two, negative three, negative four. Negative four is actually your smallest number here because I owe somebody four dollars. So it's four numbers smaller than zero. Always biggest number on the right, smallest number on the left. Okay? All right. So before we get into our mind blown moment for today, because I got a bigger one than that, believe it or not, let's see a problem where we would actually use a number line. This is a problem that you're very often going to see which symbol goes in the blank. Okay? We're comparing two numbers. We've got 13 and we've got 31. Which symbol? Is it, is it going to be a greater than sign, a less than sign, or an equal to sign? Okay, if you don't already know those off the top of your head, please go ahead and write down in your notebook, draw your little carrot, greater than, your carrot facing in the other way, less than, and equal sign. Make sure that you use that. Okay, so is 13 greater than 31, less than 31, or equal to 31? Well, let's use our number line to figure out. Let's put 13 on our number line. If I'm looking at 13 here, I can see, let me erase that it's a big circle because it's kind of in the way. There we go. So if I'm looking at 13 here, I can see that it has 1 in the tens place. So it means if I'm looking at my number line, it's got to be somewhere here between 10 and 20. Okay? And then I look at the ones place, it's up 3, okay, so I'm going to be closer to the 10 than I am to the 20. There's my 13. Now next I'm going to look at my 31. Can I put that on my number line? I've got a 3 in the tens place, so it's got to be between 30 and 40. 
I've got a 1 in the 1's place, so it's going to be closer to the 30 than the 40. All right, but now if I look at my number line, remember the number to the right is always the biggest. So 31 here is my larger number, which means that 13 is less than 31. And so that is the symbol that I'm going to need. 13 is less than 31, and I used my number line. Even though they have the same digits, it's so much easier to figure out if you just stick them on a number line. Where do they go? Oh, it's so much clearer. All right, time for our mind-blown moment. So we already talked about one mind-blown moment, right? We talked about the fact that there are numbers less than zero. Well, here is another mind-blown moment. Number lines, they go on forever. That is the reason that you have these arrows at the either side because it's letting us know this isn't just a line that goes from this dot to that dot. It goes on forever and ever and ever. So for this particular number line, I'm going to put my zero right in the middle. And we're going to go to a very large number. It's not the largest number, but it's a pretty large number. And I mean, look at the number of zeros in that number. Let's see if I can even read it. I've got ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, ten millions, hundred millions, billions, ten mil ten billions, hundred billions, trillions. Ah, uh, yeah, it's it's a very large number. Okay, and, and our number line's gone all the way there, and then I can actually go all the way negative, which means I owe somebody that much money, which is a very, very, very small number. And guess what? I still haven't hit as far as I could count. We could count way farther than that. We can actually say that our number lines go all the way to infinity, and these are infinity symbols. So you could count and 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 still never get to the end of a number line, either in the positives or in the negatives. Mind blown? Try it. Try counting until you get to the end of the number line. I promise you, you can count for the rest of your life and you still won't get there. Amazing. Mind blown. All right, time for our reference sheet. Go ahead and take that reference sheet and put it into your notebooks, uh, whether you're gluing it or hole punching it, whatever you're doing for yours. This reference sheet, of course, is on number lines. So if we read our first thing, it says numbers on a number line go from smallest to the left to biggest on the right. Take a chance and highlight that. Underline it, circle it, because that is your most important thing to remember that your smallest numbers are over here on the left and your biggest numbers are over here on the right. And it also tells us that number lines can show numbers that are very far apart or numbers that are very close together. So if we look, we've got four number lines here. This first number line goes from zero all the way to a thousand, and it's counting by hundreds. Inside this space right here is this entire number line. So we've kind of done a magnifying glass, right? Pulled that out. So this number line we have from zero to a hundred, and it would fit inside just this little space. Okay, and this one, of course, we're going to count by tens. Now we can get we can show you even more detail. Because within here, we've got the next number line, which is just 0 to 10. And that would fit within there. And then, of course, our final number line within just 0 to 1, this is actually counting by tenths. So we've got 0, 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths, all the way up to 1. Because there are numbers smaller than 1. That is your third mind-blown moment for this episode. We have three mind-blown ideas in this. Number one is there are numbers smaller than zero. Number two is that number lines go on forever. And number three is that there are numbers in between zero and one. And I know this last number line isn't going to mean a lot to everybody right now, but it will down the line. And the idea is that we can make our number lines smaller and smaller and smaller or bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay? This is your reference sheet. Please come back to it. Please use it. And especially you can use it right now when we move into our spot check. All right, we're going to go ahead and put these numbers on this number line. So I want you to do me a favor. In your notebook, draw the number line. We start at 20. We end at 60. Okay, we're counting by tens. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Real quick, draw it in there. 
All right, I'm going to give you a number. On your number line, add the number 25. Where would the number 25 go on your number line? Pause, place, I hope you have it there. 25, okay, I've got two tens. It's got to go between 20 and 30. Five is half of 10, so it should be right smack dab in the middle. And there is my 25. Next number, on your number line, place 33. Pause, work it out. Hope you paused, here we go. Now we have three in the tens place, so it's gotta go somewhere between 30 and 40. Three in my ones place, which, which means it should be slightly closer to 30 than it is to 40. 33 is now on my number line. Next, 49, pause and place. Did you pause? I hope you did. All right, 49, I'm looking at it, and I've got a four in the tens place, which means it needs to go somewhere between 40 and 50. And nine in the ones place tells me it should be a whole lot closer to 50 than it should to 40, and there is my 49. All right, next number, 52, pause and place. All right, let's check. I've got a five in my tenths place, which means it's gotta be somewhere between 50 and 60. The two in the ones place means it should be closer to the 50 than the 60, and there it is. All right, a bit more challenging, 19. 19 has a one in the tenths place. Now, wait, my number line starts at 20, which would be a two in the tenths place, so it's gotta be somewhere before here that's right, remember my mind blown moment? Number lines go on forever, so let's just make it a bit longer. All right, let's say that this is 10. All right, so where does 19 go then? Well, it goes somewhere between 10 and 20. The nine tells me it's a lot closer to the 20 than it is to the 10, and there's my 19. Last number to place, 61. Pause and place. All right, let's take a look. I've got a six in my tens place, so can't be between 50 and 60. It's gotta be after 60. Again, I can just stretch this out. What's my next 10? Oh, that's right, it's a 70. All right, sorry, it just doesn't really like to write, this little pen of mine. All right, so I've got 61, somewhere between 60 and 70. The one here tells me it's gonna be closer to 60 than to 70. And there's 61 on my number line. Check your work, make sure you got them right. If you didn't get them right, try and figure out why you didn't get them right. All right, it's reflection time, guys. Go ahead and add your reflection to your notebook and let's take a look at what our choices are today. We're gonna choose one of these five options to reflect on the learning that's happened today. We can start with option A, which is to write a paragraph at least five sentences explaining how we go about creating a number line. Remember, you have to have your capitals, you have to have your punctuation, it has to make good sense. Just because it's math doesn't mean your writing skills go out the window. Option B is to draw a number line that starts at zero, goes all the way up to 10,000, label those nine important multiples that go in between. Should be fairly simple really good choice for you guys. Um, just remember to think about even spacing. Option C, this is a challenging one. They want you to draw a number line that goes from zero to one-tenth. Okay, that's a challenging one. You still have to label those nine important numbers in between. You can do it, but remember that's a challenge. Option D, choose 10 numbers that are not multiples of 10 and put them on a number line. Remember that on your number line, you're still probably gonna want some solid multiples so that you give yourself a reference point. Option E, take one of those number lines from the reference sheet and label one number that could appear in between each of those labeled numbers. You need to add at least 10 numbers onto that number line. Once you are done with your work, don't forget to reflect on your reflection. Take time to ask yourself, does my reflection show thinking about this week's concepts? Does it follow all of the guidelines? And will it help me review my thinking at a later date? 
Remember, guys, this is an interactive notebook. You need to be able to come back to it, and if you can't, it really wasn't helpful. All right, I'm going to give you time to reflect now, but be sure to come back and watch more of my math mini lessons taught to you always from my RV to you wherever you are. You can go ahead and like the YouTube channel, follow the blog for more of this, and if you are missing any of the resources that I showcased here in this lesson, the links for those will be in the description. Have fun reflecting and have a great day, guys.